Michael is making a sort of an exhibition of herself. Despite her best efforts, the black shirts felt unity was a liability. In contrast, her sister Diana was the leader's favourite. Diana was the glamorous sister. I mean, they looked alike in a way, but in fact, Diana was a famous beauty, so it was very bad luck on Unity, and going around with Diana would probably be tough for Unity. Mosley, although older, was a very glamorous figure. He had those Errol Flynn, Rudolph Valentino looks that were so fashionable at the time, so that was yet another kind of very dashing thing that one of the older sisters had done. Diana's relationship with Mosley is a very big fact of Mitford life. And what should Unity do about it? So it looks to me as if one thing she could do about it is go one better. In 1933, Adolf Hitler became the Chancellor of Germany. He celebrated by organising the first in an extraordinary series of state-funded rallies. The Nazi Party rallies took place every September in a specially built stadium in Nuremberg. And, of course, Hitler was the star of the show. He would drive through the streets of Nuremberg in, his, in an open car with his hand extended in the fascist salute. And there would be endless screaming and yelling. And, obviously, it generated a feeling of mass hysteria. crowd was Unity Mitford. She had come to Nuremberg with her sister Diana, part of a delegation from the British Union of Fascists. 19-year-old Unity's life was about to change forever. It was an extraordinary spectacle of power. The nearest equivalent that we can give is a huge rock concert. People are somehow losing touch with their own personality and surrendering some part of their personality to the occasion. The Nuremberg rally had a profound effect on both Diana and Unity. I mean, it was so dramatic and gripping and everybody was obviously listening and then Hitler, all by himself, walking up onto the stage. <laughs> Unity was already, as it were, convinced about uh, Hitler, but this turned conviction into worship. As Unity later said, The first moment I saw him, I knew there was no one I would rather meet. From then on, she wanted to be near Hitler as much as possible. She wanted to be in Germany as much as possible. Unity convinced her parents she wanted to learn German. In the summer of 1934, she enrolled at a language school in Munich, close to the headquarters of the Nazi party. She set her, 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 her mind on getting Hitler. And she discovered that Hitler's movements could be ascertained. And it's one of the extraordinary things about Hitler's daily life that he was so available to the public. You knew which cafe he'd be in, you knew which restaurant he'd be in, which hotel, and he would just go and meet people over sticky buns and cakes. And it was possible to meet him like that. And he was in the habit of eating in the Osteria Bavaria in Munich. And she started sitting in the Osteria Bavaria every day. So he would have to come into the front part of the restaurant where there was this English girl. She was making eyes at him. And eventually Hitler said, who is this woman? And somebody said, she's the daughter of an English lord and she very badly wants to meet you. So he said, bring her over. Uh, 
Hitler asked her about herself, who are you, what are you doing here? And she said, I'm an English uh, girl, and, uh, and I so admire, I so admire what you're doing in Germany. And so Hitler was intrigued by her. This strange English blonde sort of Aryan came up and was staring at him and obviously adored him, and he was, he was, he was interested. Yeah, sure. After ten months stalking Hitler, Unity had finally met her idol. They spoke for over half an hour, and Hitler put Unity's meal on his bill. She wrote an 800-word letter to her father, describing the day. It was the most wonderful and beautiful of my life. I am so happy that I wouldn't mind a bit dying. I suppose I am the luckiest girl in the world. For me, he is the greatest man of all time. Unity's relationship with Hitler progressed reasonably fast after she'd met him, and it wasn't too long before she was very much in his uh, kind of inner circle. She would be invited to uh, the party rallies, to sort of state events, so she was very much persona grata. In April 1935, Unity's sister Diana came to visit and was introduced to Hitler for the first time. His manners were very courtly. He kissed hands and ushering ladies to a chair and that sort of thing. And he did have a sense of humour because he very clever at imitations, which is a sign that somebody's very observant. And uh, he could take people off in a very clever way. Apparently Hitler would do um, a mimicry. For, for instance, I think he imitated Mussolini. Um, which would have been rather fun to see, wouldn't it? Everyone else would just said, yes, yes, mein Führer, yes, mein Führer. Unity and Diana wouldn't be scared of him. And I suppose he thought, oh, well, thank God, here's two human beings who aren't scared of me. After meeting Diana, Hitler described the Mitford sisters as the perfect examples of Aryan women. While Diana returned to Britain, Unity stayed in Munich and became even closer to Hitler. So why was the Chancellor of Germany so interested in a 20-year-old British student? I think that Hitler liked Unity for two things, really. I think she entertained him. He liked having sort of pretty young women around him. But there was something else which is quite powerful, which was that Hitler, as is well known, was exceedingly superstitious. He had all kinds of weird ideas about predestination, about his own role in German history and German mythology. The connections between Unity and Hitler did seem uncanny. She had not only been conceived in swastika, her middle name was Valkyrie, after the war maidens in Wagner's opera. Hitler was obsessed with Wagner and was astounded to learn that Unity's grandfather, the first Lord Reedsdale, had been Wagner's friend. Reedsdale had also translated books by racial theorist Houston Stuart Chamberlain, an author who had profoundly influenced Hitler when writing Mein Kampf. When he discovered this link between Wagner, German history and Unity, it would have been for him, a sort of sign that he was, unity was sort of sent to him, it was destined or something like that. Unity and Hitler's relationship soon became the subject of speculation in the British press. Speculation that still continues today. Journalist Martin Bright is trying to substantiate rumors that Unity Mitford gave birth to Hitler's baby. Well, we've got to the stage now where I'm really keen to know whether this birth happened or not. So we've come to the Oxford Registry Office to ask whether any births were registered to the house in Wigginton and whether we can find out whether there was, was any child at all. Reporter Martin Bright has heard a claim that Hillview House was a secret wartime maternity home where Unity Mitford gave birth to Hitler's baby. Martin is visiting the local registry office to see if any element of the story can be substantiated. 
Well, it does seem from the registers that that address has been used for a lot of babies' births. And more babies than would have been possible for a single family. I would think so, yes. I mean, one would expect <laughs> there to be a bit of a gap, whereas these seem to appear very frequently. The records examined by Martin suggest that Hillview House was used as a maternity home during the war, but there is no sign of Unity Mitford's name in the official birth register. Is there such a thing as unregistered births? Indeed there are, there are. I mean, we do on occasion now get people who come to us and they're absolutely certain that they were born in a, at a particular address and we haven't got any trace of their entry. I mean, obviously we're talking here pre-National Health Service, we're talking about war years, so I don't know if, if any babies did slip through the net. So these are the indices... For well, it's very tantalising. We've found that the house was indeed a maternity home but we still do not have the confirmation of, uh, of Unity Mitford's child. The question of how intimate Hitler and Unity became has been the subject of gossip and innuendo ever since they first met in 1934. At that time, Hitler had begun courting Ava Brown, but the couple were not yet living together. In May 1935, on hearing of the hours Hitler was spending with Unity, Ava wrote in her diary, She is known as the Valkyrie and looks the part, including her legs. I, the mistress of the greatest man in Germany and the whole world, I sit here waiting while the sun mocks me through the window panes. Somehow he was able to play unity off against Eva Brown. So there's a scene in one of the party rallies when he puts these two women sitting next to each other in his special box. He knew that this could only create trouble. And Eva Brown was jealous of Unity, and Unity was jealous of Eva Brown. So there's some element of sexual rivalry being, being inspired by Hitler. Two weeks after the diary entry, Eva tried to commit suicide by overdosing on sleeping pills. Hitler immediately became more attentive and installed her in a villa with a maid and a Mercedes. For Unity, it was an important lesson. Keeping the Fuhrer's attention required dramatic behaviour. In the summer of 1935, Unity saw an opportunity when she became close to one of Hitler's oldest friends. Julius Streicher, the publisher of hysterical anti-Semitic newspaper, Der Stürmer. Streicher's only message, really, is that the Jews are responsible for all the evil of the world and must be killed. And he, he, he was a tremendous fool. He has the lowest IQ of all the Nazis who were tried at um, Nuremberg. Um, and he's just a hideous figure, whom you would have thought repellent just at once. Streicher invited Unity to the Hesselberg Festival, a Nazi youth rally with a pagan theme. Unity got in full Nazi fig for this thing. She's wearing leather and she's wearing gauntlets and she's got her badges and all this. Bit. As Stryker addressed the 200,000 strong crowd of Hitler youth, he invited Unity onto the podium beside him. She stepped up to the microphone and gave an impromptu speech. Her message is Stryker's message that the Jews are responsible for everything bad, which is what Stryker would have wanted her to say. Unity's appearance at Hesselberg was unusual enough to be noted in the British press, but she was about to go a step further. Two weeks later, she wrote an open letter to Stryker's newspaper. The English have no notion of the Jewish danger. Our worst Jews work only behind the scenes. We think with joy of the day when we shall be able to say England for the English, out with the Jews, Heil Hitler. P.S. Please publish my name in full. I want everyone to know that I am a Jew hater. You can't any more think that this is a girl who's just a loose cannon chundering around Germany. Once you take a public position like that, 
the public's going to respond.